All right, everybody, we're on our day two of our Hot Rod Week to Wicked, presented by Duralast. Uh, yesterday, we finished up suspension, got rid of the old stuff. Uh, Mike's up right now in the front, finishing up the brakes. Uh, Jay, what do we got to do today? Well, I'd like to get the engine trans installed. Uh, we still have to put an oil pan on this thing and put the engine mount conversion kit that's going to convert this LS into the stock mounts that are on the Chevelle now. So we've got a wire harness to install, but I think if we can get the brakes and uh, the engine trans in, measure for a dry shaft, we'll be looking pretty good for the end of the day. So why don't we get this thing off the stand, back it up to the trans, drop it in. Let's do it. Um, we're gonna measure the depth of the tank, and it is six and three quarters of an inch. So I just measured that out. About an inch and a five eighths shorter than the tank depth, right here. Mark it. Then we'll cut that real quick. And you can tell right here, return supply. So this is our return. I like to cut it on a bit of an angle. Make me feel better. Okay. Now we gotta do our pump. You can go. There it is. With our pickup sock on, everything's trimmed to length, wiring is hooked up, and the gasket's on there. We can drop it in the tank. Just make sure you feed your wires in there. You don't want anything pinched, cut. And there you go. Now we'll just put this in a so we're going to put this in a, a spot that feeds out of the tank. That way nothing gets caught up here as far as fuel lines go. <laughs> Look at that over there. Ah! <laughs> you put on his plate and you no. Oh, it evaporated. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go through a tip today about when installing one of these disc brake systems on the front spindle, especially on older cars. You'll find that different spindles and aftermarket spindles, the bracket is gonna have to be shimmed in order to get the caliper to be centered over the rotor. What I wanna show everybody today is why it's important to shim between the spindle in the bracket rather than the caliper in the bracket. And the reason for that is when you start to bolt the caliper to the bracket, we don't want to have to fumble later, say when we have to change out our brake pads, we don't want to fumble with having to get the shims back inside between the caliper and the bracket. We want to make it so that we can disassemble the caliper, then put the caliper back on the bracket without having to do any of that. So in the long run, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to work on your car after the kit's installed. So I'm going to bolt that up. The spacer is gonna go in between the bracket and the spindle. So then what I'm gonna do is tighten these two bolts, just hand tight, and then we're gonna mount the rotor assembly that's already been assembled onto the spindle, tighten its spindle nut, and then from there, we'll get the caliper mounted and show you how you need to make sure it's centered. And then if you look, you can see that there's a little bit of space between this outer pad and a little bit of space between the inner pad. So after we've got everything mocked up, we know that our spacing's correct. We're gonna re-disassemble the brake system, pack the bearings, do all of the Loctite on the nuts and bolts, torque them to the specific torque values needed, and we'll be able to get the master cylinder in the car, get the brakes completely finished, and we'll be on to the next project. So Christian has got the rear anti-sway bar he's going to install from QA1. And uh, I'll pretty, give him a hand because it might be a little tough with one person. These are pretty nice. Yeah. So let's All do right. this. Okay. Go. 
Okay, so I'm pulling out my Duralast Gold Starter. And we're going with this option because it is uh, lightweight. It's uh, small, especially in uh, you know a different application like ours, uh, might run into headers, so that definitely helps. Uh, it's powerful, and also one thing that I really like about it is quiet. So let's go ahead and uh, bolt it on. All right, so it's time to uh, install our EFI system. We're using a multi-port uh, intake manifold. It's got the reusable O-ring gaskets, which I like, and a uh, throttle body over there, fuel rail. So uh, let's get that going. Fuel rails are on, injectors are in, brackets are securely fastened, and uh, we'll put the throttle body on after we get the engine into the car. So we're gonna put the oil pan on and the uh, engine mounts and we should be good to go. Right, so with our new uh, Holly oil pan that's low profile and the new uh, low profile uh, oil pickup, uh, there are some times where you have to modify the windage tray, but in our case, it's actually uh, the windage tray that you don't have to modify, and that is part number 1261129 from GM, which was already in the block, so there's no need for modifications. This is important, a lot of people don't. Make sure you add your O-ring, or you will have no pickup. Okay, so we are reusing our oil pan gasket. It's just a matter of uh, drilling out some rivets on the old one, cleaning her up. Some what? Rivets. What are you, a frog? Whoa, how do you say it? Rivet. Rivet. No, like this. Rit. Rivet. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more bolt. So. You're what? Oh shoot, there's another one? Did you take it off? <laughs> I knew it was in there. <laughs> you're trying to trick me, no? wonder you were like, it's next time, okay. <laughs> Ready, set. Ah. One more. Yeah, it'll be. Okay. okay, let me get the bowl. Um, let's just get the motor plate. Dude, I felt the heat off that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Chase the camera guy. Oh, <laughs> Use your legs. Thank you. Your star's been really good to us for a lot of our projects, and so we always turn back to them. So uh, it's gonna fit right in the car without any tunnel modifications. It'll bolt right up to our LS and uh, we'll be good to go. And they use Yank converters in all their transmissions that they uh, send out. So it's a good deal. They're bulletproof. You can put all kinds of horsepower through them without having any issues. And uh, that's why we keep going back to them. We don't have a motor mount. We don't have the correct motor mounts. We don't? Look around. It's trans mount. I think those were the ones. They look just like these. Okay. Are those it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Keep going. All right, cool. All right, so everything's hooked up now. We can put it in. So what we did beforehand is we filled this tank up with 20 gallons of fuel. <laughs> that way we wouldn't have to do it after the fact, so. <laughs> oh, I'm in between the ribs. You never get that out. All right, so I'm bolting on the Holly LS plates. Um, what they do is they, they have the correct bolt pattern for the LS and they allow me to use a conventional small block Chevy motor mount, which our car cross member already has and these should bolt right up. As long as the positioning from front to back is correct and I won't know that until I set it in the car, we'll be good. Come in a little. All right, let's see where we're at. 
can see we're going down. We're clear. Do you want me to take the pump off for now? Yeah, okay, I'll take the pump off for now and we'll have to get a remote reservoir. Yep. So let's pull the pump off real quick. Like I said earlier, I ordered the incorrect motor mounts from Holly originally. We found an extra set back in the parts room that I thought might work. Uh, the position of the engine front to back is perfect. Unfortunately, the oil pan is hitting the cross member before the uh, engine mount itself is engaging where it should be. So that kind of puts a dampener on our day and kind of puts us in a bad spot for tomorrow because now the engine or trans isn't mounted. What we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna call up Polly and hopefully we can get something overnighted to us in the correct part number. And I'll ask them obviously for the right application because I can't seem to do it correctly. But that's all right, we'll stay late tomorrow night, catch up and be back where we should be by Thursday. So for that, we're out.